Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Nucleus Elements Book 8. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 9 of Book 8. Now, in this proposition, we, have, we start with two numbers, a and b, and they are relatively prime. And if we find all the numbers that fall between a and b such that they are in continuous proportion, in other words, if we have a to c is equal to c to d is equal to d to b. So again, we're looking for the number of numbers that can complete the series between a and b where they are in continuous proportion. In this example, that number is 2, but it can be any number of numbers. So in this more generic example, I have s1, s2, all the way up to s of m such that they are all in continuous proportion. So in this generic example, I have m numbers between a and b that form this continuous um, proportional series. So if we have this, then the number, of, the number of numbers between a and b that form this continuous series, in this case is m, there will be a, the same number of numbers between 1 and a. So between 1 and a, we are again going to look for the series of numbers to form a continuous proportion. And they will have, if there's m between a and b, there will be m numbers between 1 and a. And likewise, there'll be m numbers between 1 and b. So um, this is just me explaining it in a different way. This does not come from Euclid's book. But if you remember from um, Proposition 2 of Book 8, if we have a set of numbers, S to, S1 to Sn, and it's a proportional series, and they are the least of this proportional series, then S of 1 will be some number to the n minus 1th power, and S of n will be a different number to the n minus 1 power. So we will have the series would look something like this, p to the n minus 1, p to the n minus 1 times q, p to the n minus 3, q squared, etc., until we get to p to the qn minus 2 and q to the n minus 1. So this is what a, um, a least proportional series looks like. And what this proof is trying to say is that if we're looking at the length of this series, then if we have a series from 1 to the p to the n minus 1, its length will be exactly the same as this length. And from 1 to q to the n minus 1, that series will also be the same length. So in other words, these three series will be of the same length. And I find actually just looking at this, a little easier to understand the proof because Euclid didn't use algebra in explaining the proof, so he does it more by example than by anything else. So let's carry on. Let's look at Euclid's proof for this proposition. So again, we're starting with two numbers, a to b, which are relatively prime, and e is the number one, and we search for, or we have two numbers, c and d, such that a is to c, c is to d, is d is to b. So we're going to find the um, least two numbers, f and g, such that they're in the same proportion as our series. So f to g is the minimum numbers that can represent this ratio. And using the methods in um, Proposition 2 of Book 8, we then find three numbers that match f and g, and then we find four numbers that match f and g, and we could continue this to end up with the same length of whatever a, c, d, b is equal to. So we continue continuously do this until we have, again, the same length. Now, we know that h is going to be f squared. That is from the porism of Proposition 2, Book 8. So we know that h is equal to f squared. 
L is equal to G squared. And we know that M is going to be equal to F times F times F or F times H. And we know that P will be equal to G times L or L times L times L. So this comes from the porism from Proposition 2 of this book. Now, since the uh, A and B are relatively prime, that means that ACDB is the least in that series, and we have constructed MNOP to be the least of that series. So we know that ACDB is equal to MNOP, and that A is equal to M, and B is equal to P. So we know that H is F times F. So I'm using a smaller f here to indicate how many times it's being multiplied by. So f measures h, f number of times. And f is measured by the unit number, f number of times. So we have that e to f is equal to f to h, and e being 1. We're doing something similar again for m. m is equal to f to h. And f is equal to f of e. So we have that e to f is equal to h to m. And that's from Proposition 7 of Book, uh, Definition 20 of Book 7. So we have that e to f is equal to f to h which is equal to h to m. So we now have 1 to f, because remember e was equal to 1. 1 to f equals f to h equals h to a. And the length of this series, 1 f h a, is equal to the length of a, c, d, and b. And similarly, using the exact same um, methodology, we can show that the length of 1 to b is the same as the length from 1 to f, which is the same as the length from a to b. So this is what we have end up, ended up demonstrating, is that the length of 1 f h a is equal to the length of a c d b, and likewise the length of 1 g l b is equal to the length of a c d b. And thus, through, I don't know what to call it, but sort of a demonstrative proof, if you will, we have shown that the length of ACDB is equal to the length of 1 to A, which is the length of 1 to B. And that's it.